So you're looking for some Florida friendly landscaping ideas while well, you're in the right spot because we're gonna be taking this Florida native garden and doubling it in size. We're gonna keep a couple exotic Florida friendly plants, but we're gonna be adding some natives. And the last plant part of this project is gonna be the Maypop Passion Buy. So today on Wild Florida, we're covering our passion flower. <laughs> Passiflora incarnata, also known as purple passion flower, purple passion vine, maypop passion vine, or maypop passion flower. They're all the same plant. It is one of many types of passion flowers that are native to our state, but this one, it's got the look. It's the showiest of them all. Why? It's got a flower that is two and a half to five inches big. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This plant likes partial shade to full sun, but it's gonna be the happiest in full sun. And it's gonna flower the most. It's gonna have the most amount of fruit. That's right, it's got edible fruit. Actually, the whole plant is edible. So that's really cool. From its rhizome, to its stems, to its leaves, to the flowers, and even then the fruit, which I think a lot of people think of, of passion fruit, when they think of this great plant. It's gonna be great for our pollinators. This flower is gonna attract our bees and our butterflies. They're gonna be super happy. It's gonna be able to create some structure for some habitats underneath. It can be used as a ground cover, but it does its best because it is a vining plant on trellises. So whether you put it on a fence, a teepee, the arch trellis, or you wanna do a flat style trellis, all these are great options. It can get 10 to 15 feet long. So it's not a huge plant. And you gotta remember, because this is actually a host plant, it's gonna go through the cycle kind of getting knocked back, growing, knocked back, growing. So initially, it's not gonna look good if it's all by itself. But that's okay, because we're not gonna leave it by itself. See, I'm gonna actually intermix this with a couple of our other vines that we talked about, the Confederate Jasmine, and we're gonna also put it with the Coral Honeysuckle. So as it goes through its cycle of getting knocked back, forward, knocked back, forward, it will have some coverage, but also those other plants will create some additional coverage for the caterpillars that are gonna be on this plant. So here is part of the reason I am so excited to have this in our yard. See, this plant is not just a host plant to one of our native butterflies. If you remember, there are about 50 native butterflies to our state. And so this isn't this native to one, not two, three? No, that's right, five different types of butterflies. This is the host plant. That's 10% of our native butterflies use this one plant as our host plant. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Right? I think so.
So what are gonna be the five butterflies that are gonna wanna go put their babies on this plant? Well, it's gonna be the Julia Helconian. It's gonna be the red banded hair streak the crimson patched longwing, of course, our state butterfly, the zebra longwing, and of course, you see them everywhere, but you love them anyways, Gulf fritillaries. I'm really excited. We're gonna create so many baby butterflies from this plant. And actually I bought not just one, but two of them, so I can put one on either side of the arch trellis. Now, what's also cool about this plant is it also has an edible fruit, right? I said everything is edible, but you've heard of passion fruit. Yeah, it comes from a passion vine, so this is very exciting. Now, depending on what type you get, the more uh, tasty they may be or not tasty, and I hear that the caterpillars eat it too. But hey, if I can get one and they eat 10, I'm cool with that. If we just get one every now and then, like, could you save us one, please? Yeah, thanks. So when we think about our goals for the area, man, does this hit a bunch of them. One, it's gonna be on the arch trellis adding that shade to the sidewalk and the side of the house. It's gonna be, of course, a Florida native plant. It's a host plant, so we're gonna create habitat. We're gonna create a place for the babies. It's gonna create some foliage on that arch trellis, so there's gonna be places for some animals to live. There's gonna be seeds for some you know, birds to come and eat from. So we're gonna just be creating a lot of stuff. And remember, we got those big flowers coming. So it's gonna to add to that showy element, right? We said those little guys over here, but everything we're adding, this one out of all the plants we've added, this is gonna be the one that's just, bam! You've got a beauty here. I go on those, I bet. Well, it's going. Oh, it's reaching. <gasps> it's reaching. Whoa. Yep, and it's time. And now it can eat a little bit while its yep. wings are drying. I love That was so neat, he slammed it on your hand. So now that we've gotten rid of our invader and we've added all our plants in, next episode, we gotta see how it looks. It's gonna be a couple months since I originally planted all this stuff in, so we can really see, did it go well? Did it not go well? Should we have done something differently? So to make sure you don't miss that, go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notification. New videos each week on Friday and sometimes a bonus on Sunday. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.